Hello everybody! My name is Rachel and welcome to my weekly wrap-up of... shoot, is it the 30th or is it May 1st already? Oh my god, it's May 1st! It's May! You can tell I've been out of it! Uh, this past week was very busy. I socially exerted myself for two days at a work event and I came home and just kind of deflated in bed and did nothing. I had no energy to speak of and now I'm kind of like... I don't know. I'm really hyped up on tea right now, so that could be why. Um, so it was a it was a very long, arduous week. Uh, good things happened, though. It was not a bad week. <laughs> and I did end up getting five things read, and my reactions to them range across pretty much the entire possible gamut of emotions. So let's get into this. First, I finally finished... <laughs> this is a really short book, and it took me like two weeks to finish it. It's A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking with an introduction by Carl Sagan because, you know, Carl Sagan. Uh, this is a pretty famous book by Stephen Hawking and it was published in 1988, so this book is officially older than me. This book is a quick introduction to the nature of space, time, black holes, and even a little bit of string theory. It is very, very beginner level. It is intended to be that way. There are diagrams and stuff, but not any equations. And frankly, I found the diagrams difficult to understand, but maybe I'm just not used to diagrams explaining things in physics, uh, because you're working with a lot of different dimensions that I usually don't see in graphs. But that's my lack of experience and knowledge right there. The content of this book wasn't new to me, so I was a little bit bored with it, but I did really enjoy the more personal moments in the book where Hawking references something about himself or the little funny glib tidbits he gives you about the personalities of other physicists, of other scientists. It felt like he was really talking to you in a conversational way rather than lecturing you and that was really nice. I don't think I have much more to say about this book though because it is very elementary level and I have read things beyond this. I have another book by Hawking on my unread shelf, so I will be getting to that at some point in the near future. Then I read two books that I received as ARCs from NetGalley in exchange for an honest review, and I have done written reviews for both of these. The first is Central Station by Lavi Tidar, which is coming out on May 10th from Tachyon, and I loved this book. The other one is Company Town by Madeline Ashby, and I didn't like it very much. I didn't think it was a very strong book. I'll get to that in a minute. Central Station, I loved. It is intentionally a fix-up novel, um, a collection of stories that were published separately and always intended to be brought together into a novel. And it's a big like throwback or reference to the popularity or the to the proliferation of fix-up novels from like the golden age of science fiction. This is a book and an author who seems to really refer back to older science fiction in a more pulpy era of SF. And I really like the structure of this. There's something about reading this book, just the way that it was written, which was very beautiful, and the way that it was you know, the actual process of him writing it and publishing it as short stories and then bringing it together, just knitting it all together into a novel and how it worked both as just individual chapter stories and then as a whole. I really love that. It just hit all of my little pleasure centers, I guess. And I can't explain why, because it's not like I have read that many fix-up novels in my life. Central Station is set in the future in Tel Aviv in the shadow of a spaceport called Central Station that has been constructed there, and it's about the lives of the people who live there, um, who have always lived there, who have left and then come back, and the fact that they're all kind of tied together in some way, and there are some children. They're like orphans that come from the birthing centers, and they're not entirely human. There are two of them who have been adopted by people in the story, and there's this, this sense that you're, they're moving towards some sort of evolution, that the alien others, uh, these like artificial intelligences, are controlling something. They have something to do with the creation of these not-quite-human children, and they need something from various characters in the story. Partly this just felt like almost like a soap opera, 
Like, these are just some events in these people's lives, some major things that happen to them, the, the death or suicide of a parent, um, having an old lover come back into town. But there is also a, a larger theme being explored, and there is no decisive ending. And I liked that. It was just very open-ended because I think the point of the story is to describe the scene and the situation to you and let you figure it out how you want to. It's very open to interpretation, and that's why I think I liked it so much. It didn't feel like it had to be closed and capped off and then you just move on. Anyway, I thoroughly enjoyed this book and I would really recommend it. It's the first novel-length thing I've read by Tidar, and I'm really excited to read some of his other stuff now because I just think he's a really great writer who's writing about people and places and things that are very different from my American-centric reading experience and, you know, the fact that <laughs> there is no diversity where I live. Then I read Company Town by Madeline Ashby. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year. I've been waiting for it for about two years because it was originally supposed to come out from Angry Robot Books at the beginning of 2015, and then she switched publishers to Tor, and now it's coming out a year after that. And I once read an interview with her where she said that she really was taking the opportunity of switching to a new publisher and having her publication date pushed back to do more things with the novel, to like revise it and do something different with it. And I think that raised my expectations of this book even higher and I didn't end up enjoying the book that much. The individual characters and themes and plot points of this book were good in their respective categories. They were interesting ideas that were handled well. I don't think that any particular subject matter or anything in this book was handled poorly. The problem with this book is that the way that it's stitched together, the way the individual scenes and chapters and the flow of major plot points goes, it's very jarring. It was not smooth. This, there were major segues between scenes and chapters completely missing. When you're reading a book and you literally think that a paragraph is missing from your ebook or that you accidentally skipped a couple of pages and you go looking for them, that's not a good experience to have. And it's even worse when that happens to you multiple times in the same book. And that just kept happening to me. I wasn't happy with that. It wouldn't have been so bad, except that it was noticeable throughout the entire book, and then the final couple of chapters, the final events, the reveal of the bad guy and everything, was frankly the most confusing ending of a book I have read in a really long time. And I kind of skimmed it a few times to see if I missed something major. I actually had to go look up the name of the bad guy because I was like, where did this person come from? I don't even recognize their name. <laughs> it just, no. I was really unhappy and disappointed with the last couple of chapters. I did enjoy the story in the middle of the book. After the kind of meh beginning, the middle chunk of the book was really interesting to me. I really was getting into the character relationships and the murder mystery catch the serial killer plot was starting to heat up and it just slightly took off the runway and then crashed at the end and that's terrible analogy but I think you get what I mean. I realize I've completely forgotten to tell you what Company Town is actually about. It follows a half-Korean woman with a disability, she works as a bodyguard, and in a world of people who are all augmented with implants and gene tweaking and everything, she's completely organic. She's ha not had any modifications made, which means that she is unhackable. Because of this, she is asked to be the bodyguard to a rich company guy's son, and then her friends from the sex worker union start showing up dead in really horrific, gruesome ways, and she's investigating whether this serial killer is after them, after her, or after the boy that she is protecting. Also, there's kind of a subtle romantic subplot between her and her boss, which I was actually okay with. Like, out of all the things in this book that I could have, or might have, <laughs> really objected to, that is not one of them. My verdict on this book is that many people will find it to be an enjoyable read. It does have some interesting things to say about the topics it discusses. The fact that it has a main character with a disability is very interesting and I think very needed today. The whole discussion of 
augmented bodies and the repercussions and implications of that is also very interesting. I just don't think that it was written super well. On a completely different note, I read Lumberjanes Volume 3, A Terrible Plan. This is by a bunch of people, Noelle Stevenson, Shannon Waters, and a whole bunch of illustrators. It's about a group of girls at summer camp where weird supernatural things happen, like a woman who can turn into a bear and animals with three eyes and going through a portal into another land where time runs differently. It's cute, it's full of madcap adventures, and it has really high energy. I read this right after I came home from that really exhausting work event, and it was just the thing I wanted to read at the time. I didn't have to think too hard about it, and it was highly entertaining. So, once again, Lumberjanes does its job for me. The final thing I'm going to discuss this week is Infomocracy by Malka Older. This is a novella coming out from Tor.com's line in June, and I received an ARC from the publisher in exchange for an honest review. It is set in a not-so-distant future where all the nation-states of the world have been replaced by micro-democracies. Every 10 years, there's a very big election where one of those micro-democracies, one of those governments, will be elected to be the super majority. There have been two of these elections in the past, and the heritage government has won the supermajority both of those times, and there is concern that if they win for a third time, they'll become the de facto choice, and this will be less democratic than it's supposed to be. There are two main characters in this story, Ken, who is a campaigner for the Policy First government, and Mishima, who is uh, I'm not exactly sure what her job is supposed to be. She does some odd jobs, including fighting people with katanas sometimes, but she works for information. Information is really that SF idea of what is the next evolution of the internet and having immediate access to information anywhere at any time. Information runs everything, including running and tallying the votes in the election. And Mishima and Ken both realize that somebody is trying to either rig or crash the election and get somebody to win the supermajority who otherwise wouldn't win. I started to really enjoy this by the midpoint when we're reaching kind of this climax feel, when things were gelling, when the characters were meeting, and when actual action started and there were like physical repercussions of the more abstract ideas going on. I also quite enjoyed the characters' personalities and the descriptions of their jobs. Ken is a little bit white bread vanilla plain compared to Mishima, but that was okay. She definitely was a unique character with some stuff going on mentally and emotionally. And the whole scene, I don't want to ruin anything here, but there's this scene between her and Ken where she does this thing where you're like, WTF man, maybe he needs to get out of there. That was like the point of the, in the novella where I just sort of woke up and was like, Oh, this could be really interesting on the human level as well as the political level. So yes, I really enjoyed this, I recommend it, and it's coming out in June. That's all for me this weekend. If you've read any of these books and you want to talk about them, please comment down below as always, and let me know how your weekend has gone, and I'll be back to talk to you again in another video soon. Bye.